live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hello everyone, welcome to 2016 VMworld. This is SiliconANGLE, Media is the Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host, Stu Miniman, on the anchor set here on a two-set VMworld, second year in a row where the Cube has gotten so large. We now have two large sets in the broadcast booth here live in Las Vegas for the VMworld 2016. Stu. Miniman and I are going to be breaking down the analysis, kicking off day one. We'll recap the news, the keynotes, and of course, we have a big lineup of guests, starting with Michael Dell at 11, at the Pacific Standard Time today here on theCUBE. Uh, Stu, this is our seventh year of VMworld. When theCUBE started in 2010, VMworld was the second show we've done. We've been here ever, ever since. We've seen VMware transform as a company owned by EMC, now owned by Dell Technologies. We're living in a post-EMC Federation world. We're now living in a Dell Technologies world with respect to VMware. At the same time, VMware is navigating the legacy of the hypervisor, trying to find a position that takes advantage of their strengths and to compete in a going forward all cloud computing world or hybrid cloud as VMware puts it. But Stu, this is really going to be a seminal moment for VMware because this is where they have to make their move, okay? Post-Federation, long live the Federation, Federation's dead, long live the Federation, with Michael Dell Technologies, but the world's changed. Microsoft Azure's got exploding onto the scene. Amazon at, at a huge run rate, exploding, taking over the world there. Obviously public cloud's great. Still an on-premise, Pat Gelsinger said by 2021, only 50% of the workloads will be cloud. Still a lot more work to be done. VMware has to make a move. Their ecosystem, some have been said, has been kind of dormant, if you will, or kind of quiet since, <laughs> since for a while, but now we're hearing the word ecosystem. Stu, your thoughts, VMware at a crossroads. What's your position Yeah, so on first of all, John, I'm super excited to be here. This show always holds a special place in my heart. Uh, I've been watching VMware, I've been working with them since back in 2002 when they were a really small company. And look at this show. I mean, it's our seventh year here. You know, the Cube has grown a lot. It's always lots of fun to do with you and Dave. Um, feeling some big shoes here. Uh, Dave Vellante, back at the ranch, uh, has another show this week. Um, but VMware's gone through a lot of changes. The industry's gone through a lot of changes. Uh, and some things that I liked in the keynote this morning, you know, Pat Gelsner laid out, you know, Five years from now, public cloud could be the majority of workloads. Remember back to when we were first coming in 2010, it was like, well really, you know, the majority of workloads are now going, going on virtualized environments. So that was only seven years ago. Uh, when you look at, you know, things don't change overnight, but in a couple of years, things change really fast. So VMware has to make the moves now. Uh, we've been critical of their cloud strategy that they've done before. There's certain parts of VMware's business that are doing really well, and other areas that we think they, they need to have a lot of work, and we're got you know, lots of interviews this week to dig into it, so super excited. In 2010, Dave Vellante and I were chatting when we saw Paul Moritz lay out his vision. At that time, that was the he un unveiling of the VMware's future roadmap, and Paul Moritz got it right, but not necessarily right for VMware. He got right for the, vi for the vision of the industry, but if you look at 2010, what Moritz laid out at that time, it's all pretty much played out, and we, you know, Dave and I were, were talking at that time, we're calling it the software mainframe. You had three levels of the stack, you had all kinds of apps at the top, you had basically DevOps in the middle, and you had converged infrastructure and software-defined infrastructure at the bottom, although we didn't call it that then. But if you look at today, okay, that's evolved. Since then, Stu, the world really has moved in that direction. Mark Andreessen wrote the seminal post on the Wall Street Journal, Software Eating the World. Now we see that happening, software power in the world. We got IoT right around the corner. In your opinion, what's VMware need to do now? Because at that time in 2010, the ecosystem was robust, exploding. You had a nice layer that VMware had with the hypervisor, but now since the spin out of Pivotal and all the assets at the top of the stack, you had Pat coming in trying to create this hardened top. The ecosystem kind of felt a bit I don't know, lost, if you will? Yeah. What's your thoughts? So, so John, if, if software is eating the world, you know, where are the software assets? 
VMware is majority owned by EMC. EMC is being bought by Dell. Dell is primarily a PC and server manufacturer. So while there are efficiencies to be gained uh, by pulling together the supply chain and having tight ties uh, with the server piece, where is the software innovation coming? Um, you know, cloud has been this, this you know big giant question for VMware. For a couple of years, it was the vCloud Air uh, environment. No mention of vCloud Air. The vCloud Air network now is service providers and how they're moving their environment. Um, it, it was funny, watching the Twitter stream on the keynote this morning, everybody's going all nuts because they can't get their, their premise uh, differentiated from premises, which is your location. Uh, you know, but th those semantics aside, when I talk to customers and when I talk to channel partners, you know, VMware does great in the data center, but if I'm going to public cloud, if I'm going to hosted providers, you know, VMware's not as sticky there, so how are they going to live in this multi-cloud world? They've got some software solutions uh, that, that have come out. Uh, they have a renewed push, but every year, it's a rename of the suite from VMware. They're retinkering. Uh, some of the you know, management change has shifted yeah. up there, so uh, it is not a winning strategy yet, uh, but I was, I was talking to Chad Sackage this morning from EMC, and he said, you know, if, EMC and some of the other companies, you know, well, you'll fail, you'll fail, you'll fail, and eventually you'll win. So VMware's coming at it again with another swing as to how they're going to be successful with the cloud. And for me, it's that transition of the channel partners that they've been using traditionally with some of the new ones that get it, whether that be service providers, people that are working with multi-cloud environments like Azure yeah. uh, and AWS, because the other thing, we're going to talk to Michael Dell at Dell World. Who was Michael Dell sitting on stage with? It was Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, his biggest partner. So how does VMware and Microsoft, who have been enemies since day one, how does that fit in this ecosystem? I think the new reality, to his good point, is that VMware has realized through the failure of their cloud strategy, at that time, groping, if you will, to figure out if they could be a major player in the cloud. At that time, Azure was struggling before Satya Nadella became CEO. So it looked like a good shot off the tee, middle of the fairway, VMware will have a cloud paddle, can create a converged infrastructure. But here's what happened. They just didn't have the product leadership at the time. And at the same time, the market was shifting. Shifting big time. So now I think they see a clear line of sight on what their plan is. And that, to me, seems to operationally the cloud. And Pat kind of talked about this for, for multiple years now, to give Pat a lot of credit. He's been always saying hybrid cloud. It's not a halfway house or a way station. It is, a, it is the destination for management. So to me, the big takeaway as I walk around the hallways here is that it's buzzing around operation, operationalizing the cloud. So hybrid cloud, you know, cloud foundation, cross cloud, interclouding, whatever they call it. VMware is going after that operational aspect. And one notable point, during the keynote, people were huddled all in the stations around the cameras. And they're showing essentially machine code. Basically, they're geeks. This is a geek show, Stu. They are targeting their sweet spot of their core business, going back to the geeks in the data center who want to go operationally to the cloud and manage cloud. So to me, I think VMware right now seems to see the line of sight. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, so, so John, uh, you know, really interesting points there. Uh, if you look at kind of the ecosystem, one of the things Michael Dell said is it's critical for VMware to be open, to be successful, and we'll continue that going forward. That doesn't necessarily mean open source, and the question we've had since Pat came in as CEO four years ago is can they follow the Intel model, Pat of course came from Intel, to can they expand what functionality they have without kind of ticking off the ecosystem and trying to take too much of the, of, of, of the ecosystem dollars there. So when they get into backup, when they get into some of these software solutions, uh, there are certain ecosystem partners that get less money and are going to look at other solutions. Uh, you know, big examples are when Veeam pivoted away from just doing VMware and, and embraced Microsoft. You know, that was a big ripple. VMware kind of pushed back. Nutanix, it's a real, you know, struggle between Nutanix and VMware. Nutanix now has has you know, a KVM-based hypervisor in their Acropolis platform, uh, but you know, most of their customers are still using VMware. Uh, we'll be talking to some of the Nutanix people, but it's that, that give and take between VMware wants to own a lot of pieces and control it, yet you know, we're going to be open and give you choice as long as you know, VMware is at the center of it. Didn't hear a lot about Docker containers in this show yet. I'm None. not sure if we're <laughs> going to hear any, but it brings back to the point of this ecosystem. I'm calling it the ecosystem 2.0 for VMware. Um, big announcement here with IBM Cloud. So VMware is certainly going into bed with IBM. I think that's a really huge move. So this kind of brings up the conversation of what is the VMware ecosystem 2.0 look like 
traditionally it was a lot of storage and server vendors taking advantage again of that shim layer and the stack where they could enable virtualization amongst the partners. But as we go to the cloud, does the IBM cloud announcements do tease out this notion of an, uh, ecosystem 2.0? And what does it mean? I mean, Azure going to be right around the corner? You mentioned Satya Nutella. Yeah. This is the roots of VMware. This is good for them. Yeah, absolutely, John, right. IBM up on stage. I'm sure, you know, the EMC people sitting there, you know, aren't thrilled to see IBM there. Of course, VirtuStream's going to be supported. Uh, there, there's lots of other solutions that are supported, but, you know, who's going to be making money? You know, who are the key partners going to be? Um, and, uh, you know, it's actually, John, our last guest of the week, I think, uh, is uh, it's Ajay Patel, who's the head uh, of the cloud group. I know he's working closely with a lot of the service providers. I hear good things, but it's a little bit of a fight inside, as, as always, there's that transition transition from who brought us money and how we went to market to the new ways and the emerging ways uh, going forward. Uh, you know, speaking of new ways going forward, I, I thought it was interesting. Pat Gelsinger, you know, started off in kind of his professorial mode this morning, talking about digital transformation. And of course, it's, it's something that's more than just a buzzword. Uh, our head of research, Peter Burris, who's here this week, has been talking a lot about digital transformation for, you know, quite a number of years. So how is VMware helping customers move forward? And it's got to be much more than just that, that hypervisor layer. Um, because, because it, it's, it's much more than that, and that's not the most important thing uh, for customers going forward. You're watching VMworld 2016. If you want to tweet at us, um, at Furrier, F-U-R-R-I-E-R, -R -E Stu is at Stu, S-T-U, three-letter Twitter handle, which is a story in among itself, or also tweet at theCUBE, or join crowdchat.net slash VMworld, and join the conversation, ask us questions. We're going to have Michael Dell on at 11 o'clock. Uh, Dave Vellante is chiming in. Hey, Dave, good to see you out there on Twitter. He says, uh, you know, Michael Dell says it's critical that VMware remains means open. It doesn't mean open source, it means choice. Again, Dave brings up this open source conversation. Open source is a critical component of the innovation, and if software's eating the world, and now software powering the world with IoT, what does the future of the software-defined data center look like? What is a software-defined data center, Stu? This brings up a lot of good questions. Is it going to be proprietary software? Is it going to be open source, a blend? What does choice mean in an open source world? Yeah, and the role of the data center becomes less important for most users. It's not, you know, we've got a lot of storage companies here. Storage just sitting there isn't where the value is. It's things like IoT and analytics and ways that I can leverage my data, get more value from our data. Um, I expect to hear a lot of discussion about analytics at this show. Um, you know, you mentioned kind of the containers and dockerization. Um, it, it seems that VMware's kind of, you know, lowered some of their messaging on this. It's in there. They are doing a lot of work. I know Docker has a presence here at the show, uh, but it's not nearly as, as much of a buzz as we had last year. Um, but there is a good presence, John, of kind of the cloud native activity, developers. We've got a couple of segments we're going to be doing here at the show into that because many of the people that went from kind of an infrastructure admin to a virtualization admin, now they're trying to figure out how do they either go down that developer path, maybe down that cloud architect path. What is the future for all of those people uh, that have for so long gotten their certifications and managed infrastructure? One of the things I'm going to ask Pat Gelsinger, certainly Dell might not have some uh, visibility on it as a level of Gelsinger and the VMware people is, what does cloud ops mean to you? Because right now it seems that VMware is targeting the operational people within the enterprise for this hybrid cloud to the public cloud. So that's going to be one area I think that's going to be important. I think it's clear for VMware, the personas that they're targeting, Stu, are operational people because the world is shifting fast. There is a mention, of, of course, in the hype cycle, IoT, Internet of Things, is booming. Uh, the comment by Pat Gelsinger, he said, quote, that by, 20, um, by uh, 2019, more machines will be enabling devices um, than humans connected to the internet. So that means there's going to be a crossover very similar to what happened with virtualization and servers. Uh, I think it was 2012 VMworld that they talked about server virtualization surpassed actual physical machines. So interesting dynamic. With IoT right around the corner, with the mobile apps booming, this is a huge deal for VMware. So the ecosystem kind of ties into that. Your thoughts on IoT, how it fits in here. Is it hype? Have they got any reality? Have they got any products? Is it yeah. just kind of their positioning? So we have a number of trends here, John, that can potentially be very disruptive to VMware. We talked about public cloud. Uh, IoT is another one. It's, you know, where do those applications live? Uh, you know, do they live for a shorter time? It, it's, it's about passing data, uh, you know, much faster. Uh, and, you know, I haven't dug into VMware's uh, play in IoT, uh, but there's lots of other companies. They're partnering with IBM. Of course, we hear companies like Microsoft and Amazon pushing hard on IoT, but there's many waves here, and service 
server virtualization is not the critical component. It might be in there, it might be a piece of what's going on, uh, but this is where there's the potential for some of those disruptions because VMware has been really dominant for a long time in this space and it's not, you know, we spent years talking about, oh, is it Hyper-V or KVM or VMware? And that's not the discussion anymore. It's those waves of, you know, IoT and just moving my application, SaaS. You know, when we look at SaaS, is two-thirds of public cloud according to our data. Uh, and many of those customers, you know, aren't thinking as much about the underlying uh, infrastructure underneath it. Uh, you talked about Pivotal and Cloud Foundry. What layer of the stack do I care about? And what's kind of beneath what I'm doing? And if VMware can't get their product set up market enough, uh, they can become irrelevant kind of fast. Stu, I want to use the last couple of minutes we have here to talk about the role of VMware in the future. Obviously, we speculate on theCUBE all the time. Will Michael Dell spin out VMware? Obviously, the, the Pat Gelsinger kind of virtual stream dynamic around, we want to kind of, kind of take our own path. It's always been VMware's DNA is to buck the system on the Federation. The Federation is no longer part of the system. Now it's Dell Technologies but also the global realities of today's marketplace with China, for instance, not yet, that deal is not yet approved, although news reports had it, Rob Hof at Silicon Angle teased out the fact that that is not approved, and yet that there's a global reality because there's Chinese competitors out there who might want to see this combination slow down because Dell Technologies might be too powerful. So, and of course you got HP Enterprises around the corners too. Global realities, competition, what is the future role of VMware? <laughs> yeah, we boil that all down into a couple of minutes. No <laughs> problem, five minutes. So, Go. So, so great, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll default back. We've done, digging a lot of this uh, context uh, on Wikibon. You know, how are the public cloud trends changing? Uh, global economics, I mean, from what we hear, there, there's a lot of uncertainty there. We, we saw what happened to VMware stock with the whole Dell Technologies thing, it plummeted. Boy, did that cause some concern. Some people left, uh, senior people left in VMware. Some of them, we hear Martin Gasato uh, and, uh, oh gosh, the, the, the no number fathers. two. But some of these guys are still involved uh, on, on, on a pretty regular basis, so. Um, you know. They need the product chops, too. They got to compete at the product level. Yeah. If they want to win the developers in the operations side of the business, they got to have the product shops, do they? Are they yeah, so, so on some of the day-to-day -day stuff that, you know, Michael Dell sees kind of conversion, hyperconverge is one of the big areas here. For, according to our research, Dell's actually in a really good position and VMware is, uh, you know, close to leading the pack. It's Nutanix, VMware, EMC Scale.io, uh, you know, all, you know, at the top of the leaderboard uh, there, but it's still very early in those days. And just like kind of public cloud, it's going to be over the next five years that some of these things really shake out. Um, so, you know, where does Dell and, and, and VMware uh, put their technology to be able to help uh, customers through that digital transformation to move forward. There's, uh, you know, lots of challenges here and it's not something we can boil down. So in I a got a comment minutes. on Twitter. I said, VMware is becoming an arms dealer to the cloud providers. Good strategy about time. Comment back was three years too late. I'm not sure I believe in that. I think that right now it's still early on. I think hybrid cloud is just basically a gateway drug to a fully integrated end-to-end uh, -end cloud and on-prem. Um, so other companies like Oracle, for instance, look at it simply as saying, hey, we'll do Oracle on Oracle end to end. You look at IBM, a little more open, but this is VMware's position, yes. that they so, want to be open. So John, just to interject there, the, the problem I have is VMware is today, their hybrid solution is mostly in people's dead data centers or maybe in some hosting providers. Their public cloud offering isn't really there. They're propping up IBM and trying to push hard there as, you know, IBM is a player in the space and if IBM can work there, that, that's in their best interest. But IBM has a number of partnerships. Um, you know, can VMware become relevant with Amazon, Microsoft, Google uh, of the world? Dell Technologies thinks that they can push into some of these spaces, either be a supplier or how, how they work in some of these environments. Um, but I still want to see how VMware and, and, and Dell together, um, you know, how they partner with, the, you know, some of those public cloud environments. Or five years from now, are we going to find that VMware is just yeah. shut out of a majority of the market? You know, Dave and I, Dave Vellante and I always talk about the this industry as being like NASCAR. Everyone's in the pack. Someone slingshots hit the curb. They go, you know, they fly over the wall. But the reality is, is that. You're looking at the vendors right now saying to yourself, okay, where do I position myself vis-a-vis -vis the competition? If you look at what VMware is doing, they have a good shot at winning the operational aspect of it. And with their ecosystem now kind of going to the next level of the cloud, they can manage those, these clouds. Um, and I made a comment two years ago at an OpenStack with Lou Tucker, a uh, legend in the industry now at Cisco, um, talking about interclouding and making the premise that internetworking, which became out of the networking business from the TCP IP days, became a real growth area. 
So if Gelsinger and team have it right, interclouding, if you will, they call cross-cloud, can be a huge opportunity for the enterprises. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, so, so John, uh, lots of areas. It's one of the key areas I want to dig into this week. We've got lots of good guests. Uh, we're bringing in some guest hosts this week, too. Um, a quick shout out uh, for those people that have watched our program. Uh, you know, we brought in some of the you know, key people that really understand this community, understand a lot of this technology. Uh, John Troyer, Mark Farley, and Keith Townsend. So we've got two sets, three days, you know, so many pieces here. So I want to save some of this for the wraps, John. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I know we've got Michael Dell coming on shortly. And so. we'll be scouring the landscape at night. Uh, some big parties going on. We'll hear the hallway conversations. Of course, again, like Stu mentioned, we got new Cube hosts reaching into the community and, and getting some of the best commentators out there. Um, and like Stu mentioned, it's going to be great. Of, of course, two sets. Michael Dell, Pat Gelsinger, all the VMware top dogs are coming on. And, of course, customers. And we're going to have a great time here at VMworld. Three days of live wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. We'll be right back with more live coverage. You're watching The Cube.